This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that we've seen how elastic audio can be applied to a voice performance, let's take a look at how we can use this in music. So I'm going to bring in a guitar part that I want to use. I'll navigate to this. It's called Freeform Guitar. You'll find it in your exercise files. It's a 1644 mono guitar track. So let's do convert and done and pop it in with my files for this session. I will put it on a new track. I'll have Pro Tools build me a new track. It'll be a mono track because it knows that it's a mono file. And I'll put it at the session start. So let me say OK. There it is. I'm going to need to mute my 1234 from the last movie and my click. And I'm going to reset the volume for this guitar file down to about oh, somewhere in there so it doesn't blow us out when we listen to it. And I'll show you the area that I want to work with, but first let's take a listen. Let me zoom out so that you can see that it's about a 30 second file. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'll play just a bit. All right, so it's called freeform. It's not exactly freeform. It's kind of arpeggiated and sort of loose and semi-rhythmic, but we'll call it freeform because of its floaty nature, aside from the strumming. So the part that I want to work with, I'm going to zoom out just one more time here. So the part that I want to work with is this kind of suspended chord there into that downbeat. So this chord about here into this downbeat. And I want to kind of extend that chord before the finger slide and then hit this downbeat. So once again, it's that chord into that downbeat. So I know that it's not a monophonic sound, like a trumpet part, like a vocal part, like a saxophone part that can only play one sound at a time. Sometimes I'm actually only picking one note at a time, but it's not a monophotic part because at some point I strum chords. So we're hearing more than one note at a time. So I know that my monophonic isn't going to work. And it's not exactly rhythmic. So of the choices here, polyphonic, rhythmic, monophonic, and verispeed, polyphonic is the one I want. It works on most music of this type. So I'll pick that. And now it's actually there in the WAV file. But I'm not seeing the analysis because I haven't switched from waveform to analysis. And now let's take a look and listen and see where it put the markers in this audio file. All right, so it did a pretty good job of picking up the transients and picking up uh, meaningful places in the track. So back to the top I go with the return key, and I want to lock down this marker and this marker. Now I could move them around, but let's switch to warp, and then I'm going to zoom just a smidgen here. I think this is my chord, but let's take a listen. Let's go to about here. So I want to lock down this marker, so I'll right click on it and set an anchor point. And then I will right click here on this marker. And then I should be able to push this marker to the right and extend that chord a little bit. And let's take a listen. Let's go from about here. Without destroying the tempo of all the music that comes after. So I've really just moved this one marker here. So it went a little too far, you know? It got a little blurbly, right, sort of in there by going that far. So you really have to watch where your limits are on this sort of thing. But let's take a listen now, now that it's just a wee bit shorter. Okay, and let's go back out again. And so we'll go out to about there and see how that works. And 
let's push it just a little bit longer and see how that works. Yeah, and I heard just a little bit of an artifact there. But if you're doing this under copy, under voiceover, under sound effects, you're not going to be as aware of it as it is sitting here naked with us listening to it and focusing on it. So that's elastic audio inside of music. Now you can use this to realign where the drummer hit the snare drum, realign where a trumpet player hit a note, realign this kind of suspended guitar chord. So elastic audio allows us to retime the internal events of our performance. Now later on, we'll take a look at MIDI, which does this in a completely different way. It's not using audio files because each MIDI event has its own start point and end point, and it's an entirely different way of timing the music. But if we want to do this in audio, Elastic is what we use. In fact, until a couple of Pro Tools releases ago, I think it was seven something, we couldn't do this internal timing at all. We could snip it, as we've seen, and we could use the time compressor trimmer to extend this piece, like for instance, this suspended chord, and then we would glue the pieces, this front piece and this back piece and this extension all together again, and we accomplish the same thing. But Elastic is powerful and it's faster, and this is the way we do it now. Now, there are a couple other things we can do with Elastic Audio, and we'll look at those in the next movie.